Next, we're going to look at um, what to do with vertical shifts and reflections. So again, remember that your base for your quadratic equation graph is going to be a standard parabola with the vertex at 0, 0. A vertex at 0, 0. Over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 1. And then fill it in like this. So you have a vertex at 0, 0. And you have an axis of symmetry axis O symmetry at x equals zero. Okay. Now, so keep this picture in mind as we go forward. We'll talk about what happens now if I put a, for example, negative sign out front. So what do you expect to happen with a negative sign out front? So let's x and y. Let's go with our standard points we've been using. Negative one, zero, and one. Okay. So when we plug these in, we see negative so it's minus negative 1 squared. So it's minus 1. So minus, we have minus 0 squared and minus 1 squared. So minus 0 is just 0, and then minus 1 is minus 1. So I'll point to negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and 1, negative 1. So uh, we've got points here at negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and 1, negative 1. So what's happened here is our negative sign here flips the parabola. So now the parabola is pointing down. It's a sad parabola. It's a sad face parabola. Okay, so that's the nice thing is that for the reflect, this is called, this is technically called a reflection because it's reflected down. But I don't really care if you know that. Maybe somebody else does, but I don't. Um, we still have an axis of symmetry in the same place at x equals zero, and we still have a vertex at zero, zero, and we're in good shape. Okay, so it flips a problem. Yay! Now, Next step is to talk about other things we can do, because that would be really boring if that's all this video is about. So let's talk about what happens if I put, a, say, a 3 in front of the x squared. Okay, so I have an x, y, let's go with negative 1, 0, and 1 again. Alright, so I have 3 times x squared. So 3 times, I'm just kind of filling out my template. 3 times x squared, so x is negative 1. 0 and 1. So 3 times 1 squared is 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. So my points are negative 1, 3, 0, 0, and 1, 3. So I've got um, negative 1, 1, 2, 3. Negative 1, 3, 0, 0. One, three. Yeah. Yeah, like that. So something like that. Got it? Okay. So what's really happened here? Remember that our graph used to look like this, right? So what happened? Well, what happened was that this point here got stretched up to that point. And this point here got stretched up to that point. Okay, so basically what this means here is it's stretched up three. And the nice thing about this is for um, putting this together for the quadratic equation is that instead of going over one, up one, we're gonna go over one, up one, two, three. And then over one, up one, two, three. And that's all there is to it. So this is the number you're going to go over one, up, up this many. Over one, up this many. Okay. So say I had that. Without even graphing it, it's the exact same equation I'm used to. The, vec the vertex is in the same spot it always was, because nothing else is going on. And then my points are at over one, up two over one, up two. 
And so here, here, and stretch it out like that. My axis of symmetry is still the same at x equals 0, and my vertex is still the same at 0, 0. Okay? So this really isn't so bad. Um, if I have, say, negative 4 x squared, this one is going to be stretched and shifted. So in, I'm going to go ahead and keep my vertex here. Go over 1, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Go over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4. Here and here. And go zip up. Make it bigger. Zip up and zip up. And that's all there is to it. Um, I'll make one more video and tell you how to actually combine all these into um, what happens when we have more than one transformation going on at a time.